Very different from any other piece I can think of, which is uh, what excites me about all this music. And here's something very different again. Um, this is the C minor prelude. And it's a kind of a motoric driving 16th note piece, which I think sometimes obscures some of the subtle things that go on inside of it. Because unlike the pattern of the C major prelude, this pattern gets changed quite a bit. And it's those little changes that, that make it so, uh, so much fun to sort of follow its progression through the piece. Um, it starts off with a C minor pedal, and that's why I put this thing, and a pattern which, even though it has an accented non chord tone, most of all the other tones are chord wise. here, because that is uh, a sequence, a, a sequence which uh, carries us through different keys. It's always moving down a step, but Bach has a lot of choices to make as to what particular accidentals he wants to use as his music is moving down step by step by step. And um, what interests me about a sequence is how, how far you can go before you get off and where, where is the um, exit point. So I want to play this sequence for you, and I'm going to keep it going for a while, just so you get a sense of what could happen with it. somehow you have to decide how to switch it off. Uh, if you can't switch it off, you get into that kind of trouble. So you have to figure out where your, where your off button is. And the off button right here is the left hand uh, changing its pattern from a ba da ba do ba da ba to something that goes ba da ba dee ba dee ba which by the way he did one time before up here uh, in that. But now this this changing in the theme sets into motion an entire new progression which is about, instead of the voices moving downward in tandem, uh, start compressing. And you get a wonderful uh, experience out of this then as the voices start getting closer and closer together and all these little sixteenth notes start getting in each other's way. <laughs> This, this, spe this really special experience, and that's what I actually was trying to show with these uh, colors here. Um, but there's more to come. And I guess the, the, the main point of all of my talking about this is a composer has to sort of figure out what is going to keep the listener engaged. What's the plot for this piece? What's the story that's going to keep them going? And um, it's finding out different things that you can do with your material and then figuring out a, a way to put them together. So that finding out this one little sense of change of direction here, having to find a way to get rid of his, get out of his sequence, led him to this progression, which led into um, this close together E flat world. But out of that, then he has to find an escape route for that, uh, which consists of um, the patterns expanding and using more of these patterns that are not so chordal, more scale-wise. And at the point here at the top of the page, 
stage. He even flips the pattern around so that instead of being that's where we started, now we're here. Uh, considerably lower, uh, using low F in the, in the top voice, which is kind of a little thing for your top voice to do. And uh, having these more uh, scale-wise patterns. sharp note that comes in against the E flat that creates that crunch that we saw in the C major piece. Here is a dominant pedal tone, so that is the similar kind of effect of building up tension. But here, unlike it was in the C major fugue, where we felt it was sort of just expansively uh, allowing us to sort of relax a little bit more into the cadence. This has entirely the, the opposite effect. Over this uh, dominant pedal tone, the G pedal tone, all the music is getting angrier and angrier, uh, using more of the, the dissonance of the very sharp note in C minor against the pedal. This filling stuff becoming more and more crazed. sense of craftsmanship. So whenever we get something that breaks away, and here the pattern just totally breaks down, it's, it's, what's significant about that is that we've had this sense of a vector pushing us away from the sort of regularity into something that's uh, exploding into, into sort of a condenser kind of material. <laughs> This is a, a, a presto over the uh, pedal. You'll notice this is also built on sequences which are uh, a half measure long. So it's always moving down half measure of time, except in this measure, the sequences speed up to be one uh, motion downward every quarter note. Which leaves us very much out of breath so we can finally have an adagio. What's really interesting to me is that the adagio actually has the fastest notes in the piece. <laughs> But the Allegro, it's not going back to this Allegro, it's going back to this Allegro. So the, the sense of return is not a complete sense of return, it's only a sense of sort of wrapping up this one section into its own uh, C minor um, <coughs> ending, uh, using uh, some, some extreme flat side notes. This has the same sort of impact as uh, the plagal cadence, the going to the subdominant, the going to the grandparent key. When you start introducing, uh, here's D flats. Um, right there, you can see some D flats. And before ending in C major. Okay, and then we have the fugue that goes along with that. And this fugue is a, uh, textbook uh, counter-subject or